Here are some of the craziest stories in football history that are so hard to believe, but we promise you they did actually happen. For example, we know it's extremely difficult to believe that a professional footballer actually pooped on the pitch during a live World Cup match, but Gary Lineker actually did this back in Italian 90. He pooped himself on the pitch and tried to clean it up by dragging himself across the field and wiping his hands on the ground, thinking no one would notice, but unfortunately for him, he was found out. It was a pretty embarrassing moment for the English striker and we don't think he'll ever be able to live it down, but at least he has managed to be a good sport about it over the years, always making jokes about the occurrence every chance he gets. But the 1990 World Cup was truly one for the ages, wasn't it? In the same tournament, another unbelievable thing happened. In a second round game between the Netherlands and Germany, Frank Rijkaard spat on his opponent Rudi Voller during a game. Not once, but twice during the same game. Oh yes, there were a few minutes with a couple of heated exchanges between both players and it eventually led to Rijkaard doing what he did. He spat on Voller twice in the space of two minutes. None of the incidents were caught by the ref, but they were very much caught by the cameras and Rijkaard was put on blast by the media. Deservedly so, you'd say. Rijkaard later apologised to Voller, but bro, still unbelievable. And that's not the only time that a player has spat on an opponent in a big fixture. Ramos and Pepe did the same back in 2012, and can you guess who the victim was? It was Diego Costa. What an aggressive trio, right? It was during one of those heated Madrid derbies back then, and while both teams were packed in the box in preparation for a corner, Ramos quickly let one out in the direction of the Spanish striker. He was so sneaky with it that the ref didn't notice. And you know what we found most shocking? That Diego Costa didn't react to that one immediately. We know the former Chelsea man never shies from a fight, but he decided to let that one go. Shocking. Later in the same game, we saw Pepe blow his nose on Costa, and again, Costa did not react. Ladies and gentlemen, not many stranger things than this have happened on live TV. But surely, this one from the 40s can contest. This game took place in London back in 1945 between Arsenal and Dinamo Moscow, and we promise you the memories everyone has about this game are very foggy. Foggy, both because it happened such a long time ago and also because of the weather. The weather was so bad that day that nobody could see anything or anybody. Players couldn't see their teammates, referees couldn't see players, and fans most definitely could not see anything going on on the pitch. We have absolutely no idea why this game still went ahead, but what was the point? Maybe they just kept playing because there was still tension all around the world following the still very recent end of the Second World War. And even the First World War had its own unbelievable stories. The year was 1914 and the war was in top gear by Christmas of that year. But would you believe English and German troops, who obviously were on opposing sides, decided to call a truce in order to play a football match? After the game, they buried casualties and repaired dugouts together. This is why we call football the beautiful game. It's literally the only thing that can unite two warring parties, even though it's just for a short time. Another football Christmas Day miracle came in 1937 when a goalkeeper was left on the pitch for minutes after the game had been abandoned. It was a game between Charlton Athletic and Chelsea at Stamford Bridge and the fog in London that day was so crazy that the ref had to halt the game and send everybody into the dressing room. Visiting goalkeeper Sam Bartram had absolutely no idea that the game had been called off, so he stayed on the pitch for minutes after everybody else had headed back into the dressing room. Bartram narrated himself that, after some time, he started to wonder why the play had not come his way. Then a policeman walked up to him to get him out of his misery. He asked Bartram what he was still doing out there while everybody else had left the pitch about 15 minutes earlier. Of course, when he finally rejoined his teammates in the dressing room, the whole place erupted in laughter. Enough of these throwbacks though, let's look at more recent crazy occurrences. Like Wayne Rooney calling boxing promoter Eddie Hearn to ask for a boxing match while he was drunk. Eddie himself revealed this in a podcast conversation with Peter Crouch. This one is actually a little easier to believe than the others because you remember that Rooney's boxing celebration back when he was still captain of United? He did that as a form of self-deprecating joke, referring to a video of him getting knocked out by his former teammate, which surfaced around at the time. So maybe Rooney is actually considering a career in boxing, who knows? I mean, his former teammate Rio Ferdinand also tried his hand at the sport, so why not Rooney? We'll now end with this really ridiculous one which was pulled off by Liverpool fans on Daily Alley back when he was a Spurs player. 
The Reds were so enraged by the midfielders' incessant diving during the game between Liverpool and Spurs, but they had a rather sick way of punishing him. In around six hours after the game, Liverpool fans hacked into Ali's iCloud account and leaked his sex tapes to the internet. That's an absolutely despicable thing to do and it's hard to believe that it actually happened, but we promise you, it did. No matter how unimaginable they may have sounded, everything we mentioned in this video actually happened. Do you have similar stories to the ones we've mentioned today? Share them with us in the comments, we'll be reading through all of them. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on new content and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.